I have been using my Keith Titanium Multifunctional Cooker for a few months now, and I'm ready to share my experience with you. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we begin, I want to thank Keith of USA for sending me the multifunctional cooker so that I could share it with you. You know, a few months ago, I introduced four items from the Keith Titanium lineup, and this is the last of the ones that I am reviewing. And the reason is, is it took me a while to really get a handle on this, because one of the things I had said in that introductory video is, uh, yes, I know it's primarily meant to be used as a rice cooker, but if it's a multi functional cooker, what else can I do with it? So I did a lot of experimenting with this at home as well as out here in the woods to get a real good idea of just what works, what you can accomplish with this item. So what I thought I would do to start with is I'm going to lower the camera, focus in on the pot itself. I'll give you the specifications as well as the key features for the pot and then I'll start to share my experiences using it. All right, let's start for the specifications for the pot. So the weight of this pot is nine ounces or 256 grams. That's everything that you see here, minus the stuff sack, which I'll share in a minute. Now, I know that may sound heavy, but I'll show you in a minute that there's another pot inside of this one, and that inner pot weighs 2.8 ounces or 78 grams. So the overall height is 5.67 inches, which is 114 millimeters, by 3.86 inches in diameter, which is 98 millimeters. Now, in fact, that's the internal diameter of the pot, not everything that you see around the top and I did that for a reason because sometimes people like to nest things inside and that's what you want to know the, is the inside diameter. The capacity for this pot is 30.4 fluid ounces or 900 millimeters but you can actually get more fluid or uh, content in it than that and I'll share with that in a minute. So just a quick look at the outside what you're seeing is the just a simple titanium pot fold out butterfly handles and a locking mechanism on the lid that keeps the lid locked on. And uh, we'll talk more about for the reasons for doing that in a minute. I want to show you the lid. We'll undo the locking mechanism. So the lid itself, very simple. Titanium lid. It has a D-ring. It doesn't stand up, but it's not hard to get up if it uh, ends up falling down because it does have a silicone protector around the D-ring. So that's what makes it easy to grab onto as easy, well as easy to uh, hold onto. It has a single vent hole, and that's important because I'll share with you why in a minute time. So inside of the pot is a secondary pot. So this inner pot, also made of titanium, has a silicone seal that can be easily removed and replaced if necessary. And I did remove it a number of times for my tests. I'll explain in a few minutes time. Now here's what's interesting about this pot. It has holes down both sides and across the, the bottom. So hopefully this is going to show up. I'll try to come in close enough. It's a little hard for me to see in the sun, but you should be able to see that there are four tiny, tiny holes in the sides of the pot and the same on the other side. And beside each of those holes is a little pictogram which says, uh, well, in this case, the top one says 280 grams or 9.88 ounces of rice. And that's a symbol for rice right there. So why do you want to know that? Well, if you flip over to the other side, on the other side, another series of holes and another series of markings, which will tell you if you're going to use 280 grams of rice or 9.8 ounces, then this is where you want the water to reside. So it gives you the measurements and the instructions for just how much water compared to rice that you're going to cook in it. Now, on your, honestly, probably the bottom marking is a single serving of rice for one people, maybe the second marking. Um, if you cook, fill this thing full of rice and cook it all, it's, it's going to be much more than you likely are going to be able to eat in a meal. Those holes continue along the bottom, so there are three tiny pinholes here. And then at the top, on either opposite side, are slightly larger holes here, steam holes as well. So the basic concept is, is that as a rice cooker, you're going to put your rice inside. Maybe you want to rinse it first to get some of the starch. You'll put your rice inside, put the pot inside of the larger pot, and then start pouring water in until it comes up to the marking where it suggests that's how much water you put for the amount of rice that you put in. Then simply put the lid on, lock it down,
and place it on your heat source. So I've used this on alcohol, works well there. I've used it on gas, that's actually where I used it most. But you can see I have also used it on a wood stove and it works well there. It's not affected by the heat in the least. Now, leave it with the rice in it for a period of time, usually 15 minutes, and take it off and your rice is done. Okay, so what's the big deal? Why do I need a double walled pot in order to cook rice. Why not just use a regular pot? Because there are a lot of pots out there which will have the same volume that are less expensive. Titanium ones as well as stainless steel and other. Why do I need a double wall pot? Well, here's the cool thing about using this is that it uses steam and pressure, and I'll give you some numbers in a minute, steam and pressure to uh, make it go faster. So your rice actually cooks a little faster with almost zero risk of burning and sticking to the pot. And that's the key thing right here. Now, the recommendation is never let the inner pot go dry. All right, that's fair. If you don't see any steam coming out of the top, take it off of the heat because it probably ran dry on you. If you do that, it's not the end of the world. You're not gonna have a bunch of messy rice stuck to the bottom of the pot that you struggle to get off. The rice is still gonna be inside the inner pot and not stuck to it. So it's not the end of the world, but if you wanna you know, ease your cleanup even a little bit, because what will happen is starchy water will end up in the bottom of the pot, and if you burn it, it's gonna have starchy water burnt onto the bottom of the pot, but at least it's not sticky rice. So it's an almost perfect cooker for rice without any risk or very little risk I should say of having rice stick to the pot and making a mess that's just no one wants to have to clean up. All right so that's using it for rice and I just went over that very quickly and I won't be demonstrating that because I found numerous numerous videos on YouTube showing how to cook rice in it. And the truth is, is I don't eat rice. Because of my diet, I don't eat rice. So I, that's why I was most interested in what else could I do with it. So give me a chance to reposition the camera and I'll show you a few of the things that I'm doing with this. All right, so the question I wanted to answer for myself is, is how can I turn this into a truly multifunctional cooker? If I'm not gonna be cooking rice, what else can I do with it? Well, to start with, using it as is with the internal pot, I was able to cook all kinds of vegetables, honestly. I cook broccoli, cauliflower, beans, peas, carrots, uh, yeah, a number of things like that. And they actually cook a little faster and with less energy or less fuel used, and that's important as well. Reason being is the design of this pot, when you put the lid on and lock it down, the only place for pressure that is built up inside to release is through this vent hole. Now, Let's be clear, it's not a pressure cooker. It only increases the pressure by about five PSI. What that does is it increases the internal temperature to about, let's see if I get this right, 103 degrees Celsius, which is about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So above the boiling point. So what you get is you get a faster cook with this than you would if you were just using regular boiling water. What does that mean? Well, what it means is, is that you can save fuel, especially if you're using an alcohol or a gas canister stove, less time on the burner, less fuel consumed, better, better economics overall for this pot. So using that inner pot, I was able to cook vegetables and they turn out really nice. No risk of burning them in the bottom of the pot. I less uh, water, you know, absorbing away all the nutrition from the vegetables and they come out perfectly done quicker. Not, now it's not, I don't want to exaggerate this, it's not like it's half the time, but it does reduce the time. And your experience may vary, but of course you have to play with it. But I can say it does save time and therefore save fuel. But let's see, what if I opened it up and removed that inner pot, take it out, and we'll bring it back in a second to talk about it. What, do I, what am I left with? I'm left with a titanium pot, a 900 milliliter titanium pot that's actually considerably lighter, 2.8 ounces lighter than it was a second ago. And I also want to point out this. Let's see if I can show you the inside. So when I put in 900 milliliters, I was thinking that's right up to the top because sometimes that's what you get. A pot that's rated at 900 is 900 to the top. This one is not. The 900 milliliters is a full inch below the very top. Now, I would not recommend loading it up to the top and trying to go for a max full one liter or whatever it might be. Um, I recommend leaving it at max 900 because that's a good functional level so that you're not having water boiling out over the top of it or anything else. So it's just good to know when he says a 900, you can use 900 in this. But in looking at it, something else occurred to me. Not only can I use it as a simple water to, uh, pot to boil water in, 
I can do something else with it. And that is, I can turn this into a French press coffee maker. So let me assemble that and I'll show you how it works. All right, so this is a trick or a hack that I actually have another video on in relation to using it with the Stanley Adventure Cook Set. And that is, I went to the thrift store and found a French press brought it home, and really all I want to save was the shaft and the filter system. Now, if you take these apart, and they do come apart very easily, uh, you may want a small little nylon bag or something to put the filter system in, because it is three different components that screw all together. And yeah, so it just turns out it fits perfectly. So to make coffee with this, put your water in, bring it to a boil, take it off of the boil, put the amount of coffee in as a, per the amount of water that you have in it, let it steep four to five minutes, and when you're ready, drop the plunger in and you can see it just fits perfectly and now I have fresh hot coffee. So that is another use you can get from this pot. All right, speaking of the Stanley Adventure cook set, here's something else that I took directly from the one that I have at home and that is the green cup. The green cup slides down inside the inner chamber perfectly as if it was designed for it. So yeah, it's nice if you have, you know, the, the Stanley does come with two of these and not very many people actually put both of them in their pot. So that's where my second one is for now. All right. So I have another use for this yet that I've been, this is where I spent most of my time uh, trying to get it to work and that is baking. All right. When it comes to baking with the titanium multi cooker, um, there were two ways that I attempted to make this work. First off is to make it work with the titanium inner pot that came with it. So I, I tried a number of different recipes, mostly muffin recipes, and I got some varying success. So here's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Remove the silicone ring because it does come right off. Uh, you don't want that burning with the heat. Number two is put a heat sink inside of this. Now I know this seems contrary to what well, you're carrying an ultralight pot. Why would you want to carry something of any weight to act as a heat sink? Well, if you want to bake, you do need a heat sink. So what I used were stones that I had found around the lake shore, took them home, washed them off soap and water, actually boiled them in some water to make sure that they were clean and sterile. And then I let them dry thoroughly. Make sure you let them dry thoroughly so that you don't have any water remaining in the rock because this will absorb a lot of heat and you don't want these exploding inside of your pot. So it doesn't take very many, but put a few rocks to cover the inside bottom of the pot. And now there is a gap between the bottom of the pot and the bottom of the inner one. And I can show you the height difference. So you can see I got just over an inch in the difference. So if you put a few stones to cover the bottom of the inside of the pot, it'll work as a heat sink. Next thing that I did, uh, first thing I tried was steam baking. Without the rocks, I tried steam baking. So basically I put a small amount of water in the pot. I put my batter directly into this, dropped it inside and put it on the heat. It started to work. And what I mean by started to work is much of the muffin did rise and start to cook, except for the top, which remained a sloppy mess. So and the reason being, of course, is those holes on the side, a whole lot of steam came back into this pot uh, as it rose around the outside of, the, of it inside of the bigger one. Yeah, that, that was a total failure. I, I consider that a failure, not worth trying again. So then I switched over to dry baking, and that's where I started using the stones in the bottom to act as a heat sink. I tried it, well, I lined it, I should say, with parchment paper. I discovered that it's probably not necessary. Uh, nothing really stuck to it and burned to the outside of it as, as a result of not being lined with parchment paper. It's not that this has Teflon or anything, but there seems to be a natural non-stick surface to it. Just the same, I would recommend you use parchment paper or some other type of material to line the inside of the pot if you want to try this. It worked but it didn't work as well as I had hoped. So I tried it two or three times to see if I could get it to work, and I did. My muffin cooked very well. And now it doesn't brown on top, but it cooks very well. It remains dry, unlike the steam baking exercise. But regardless, I still ended up with a burnt bottom, and I expect that has something to do with the gap. The pot gap is still not that great. Now, when I say burnt bottom, it's browned. It's not like it's ruined or anything like that. It's just or blackened. It's just heavily browned and quite stiff on the bottom. Yet when I took this out after I let it cool for a few minutes, turned it upside down, my muffin popped right out. So I'll consider it a success, just not as good as I would have liked to. But the reason I was doing this is I wanted to make use of this internal pot to do the baking with. 
If I want to leave this home, there is another method I can use for baking that does work very well. Let me share that with you. All right, I'm moving the camera around because the sun was catching me directly in the eyes. I couldn't even see the monitor to make sure you can watch me. I hope the video is turning out okay. So the other method of baking that works really, really very well is something that's a bit more traditional, and that is using a small pan of some type. This is a small aluminum loaf pan sized to fit inside of the pot, and yes, it worked perfectly. Now, in order to make this work, you still need stones in the bottom of the pot. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned this or not, and part of the reason why you do need stones is it always helps to have a heat sink regardless. So, so a heat sink will absorb and hold heat so that when the wind comes along, it's not robbing your lightweight pot from the heat and affecting the baking process. But more importantly, it's the characteristic of titanium. Titanium is a terrible conductor of heat. So if you don't put stones in, you end up with a very concentrated hot spot on the side or the bottom of the pot. In fact, I don't think it's going to show up now because of the, yeah, I think you can quite just about see the circle on the side here. And that's because the titanium, the flame pattern from the stove I was using, I'll explain in a moment, was the heat was concentrating there. Now it does move out to the sides, but not as quickly as it would with just about any other material that you can think of for making a pot. So what did I do? Put the stones in. Now you do need something to lift the pot or the pan off of the bottom so you get a pot gap as well. This is a little piece of stainless steel grilling material. This one is very, very thin. I found this at uh, uh, the thrift store and just cut a size to, that would fit in here. So that goes inside of the pot, gives me a little bit of a gap inside. And then my pan goes inside, and then I seal the lid on. Now let me just do that because I think this is an important part of what I want to show you. All right, so with those two latches, the lid stays on. No worry about the lid falling off during the baking process. So this is the position that I used to do baking with. Now the setup I had, and this uh, comes as a follow-up to another video I did recently, was the Firebox Nano with a cheap Chinese remote gas canister stove that I adapted to work in the Firebox Nano. And I had said during the video that one of the reasons I wanted to use it this way is because the head of the gas stove was actually a little lower inside of the stove than it would be if you used the Trangia or one of its clones. Then that, that would come very close because when you set this pot sideways on top of the nano the bottom of the pot kind of is lowered into the stove just a tiny bit and I still wanted to have enough of a gap so that they're not touching each other. Turn the heat down very low and let it run for about 15 minutes. Take it off the heat and just set it aside to cool for a few minutes. Get the lid off. I took the little pan out and perfect. Perfectly done little muffin. Now here's the thing. I had to bring something else with me. It didn't include all the components of the original stove. I took out the inner pot and I had to put something else inside of this, but it worked. And that the, the advantage of course, is that I'm starting with a very small ultralight oven and a lid that's gonna stay on and not fall off. So it worked, I'll take that as a win. And my, my point here is I'm not likely to do this too often, but I wanted to know that I could do more with this pot than just cook rice, basically. Okay, I have one more hack that I want to share with you before we close this video up. All right, actually, it turns out I have two hacks that I want to share with you before we close the video out. So the first one is, how can I turn this into something I can hang over a fire? Well, I looked at the side of these, the clasps that would normally hold the pot lid on, and I realized I could probably make a bale and just hook it onto those, and then I could suspend it over a fire. So I took a, an inexpensive stainless steel skewer, bent it into this shape, and now all I have to do is run it through the bale, or those two uh, latches on the sides, and it will hang very nicely over the fire, and it's spread out far enough that I can reach in and take the lid off without any interference from the bale handle itself. So that's one more hack if you want to use this for hanging it over fire. And the last hack is, let me just remove this bale, this is something that is more something I think ultra light hikers would do with this pot. And that's legitimate because this is an ultra light pot. So it may well appeal to them. And that is to use this as a pre-soaker. So basically when the inner pot is, here's my inner pot, here's my inner pot. When the inner pot is inside and you lock the lid down, 
there's no water coming out from around the top of the lid because it's forced down on top of that silicone seal. The only hole where any water can come out is the tiny vent hole right here. So the answer there is a piece of tape, a small piece of duct tape or Gorilla tape or something over that hole. And this becomes an entirely waterproof container. So you could drop your dry ingredients in in the morning for the amount of water in you know that it takes to rehydrate them put it in your backpack all sealed up like this and when you're ready to cook your meal then it's all rehydrated all you really need to do is just heat it up you save a whole lot of time and more importantly you save a whole lot of fuel in doing so all right now I think we're ready to wrap this video up all right let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the Keith titanium multifunctional cooker so my overall thoughts on this it has to answer the question is this something you should consider buying for yourself well it depends. Like everything else, it depends. If you're a big rice eater and you enjoy rice with your meals on the trail, then you cannot find a better device for cooking rice when you're in the field. Yes, you can use a regular pot as we already talked about, but the risk of burning and ruining your rice is so much less with this that it, that alone makes it something worth considering and as well as the cleanup if nothing else. But that's not enough. That wouldn't be enough for me to decide to buy this one because I don't eat rice, but I do want to know what else I can do with this. Well, like I mentioned, I can cook vegetables. All the different vegetables you're likely to have with your meal will cook up inside of this pot, inside of that internal pot, very nicely, very quickly. That slight increase of pressure as well as the steam do help to cook things quicker and as, and as a result, save you some fuel from your gas canister store or alcohol stove, either one. So that does add to the versatility a little bit more. Being able to turn this into a French press is actually no small thing because now I can make coffee very easy, very readily with some easily found components that you can pick up at a thrift store or I suppose you could buy a brand new one or borrow them from the French press you have at home and you can have a French press. Being able to store the little Stanley Adventure green cup inside, that's a nice plus. It's not a make it or break it deal to be able to do that but it's nice to know that you can store that inside of this. Baking. All right, so here's something I really wanted to be able to do with this. And as I mentioned, I tried baking with the internal pot with some mixed degrees of results, mixed results. And I used it on, on a, ver a horizontal with a small pan inside, which did work very well. But is being able to bake with this enough to make it something to purchase? Not for me. There are better pots out there. I, I have all kinds of pots that I would sooner use than this one for baking in. But it works, especially using that horizontal method with the loaf pan. It does work. So if this is your pot, and you do want to bake with it, then it's good to know that you can bake with it with a few rocks for a heat sink in the bottom. Being able to suspend it over fire with a piece of a, a bale of stainless steel wire of some type, that's a plus. It's not a deal breaker, but it's nice to be able to do that because it works very effectively. Being able to turn this into a, um, a, dry, a soaker, a food soaker, um, is a, not a bad thing at all, especially for the ultralight hikers. In fact, you could go a little further and take the internal pot, put a plastic bag and wrap the plastic bag over the top of this with all your contents and your water inside, and then lock the lid on, then put the piece of tape on, and when you get to where you're going, wouldn't take very much water in the bottom to heat the contents of that bag up, and I yeah, suppose you could eat directly from the bag while it's still inside of that inner pot. No cleanup, very easy. That was just another thought that I had along the way. I have one more thing that I want to try with this. I just didn't get a chance to try it before coming out to do the review. And that is, I want to see if I can make meatloaf in this. So I actually going to make a meatloaf that will fit inside of this internal pot drop it down inside with water inside and allow the steam and that slight increase in pressure to cook the meatloaf and we'll see how it turns out if I do do that well I will at some point if I do do that and it turns out I'll bring it back as a video okay I think that's enough on my part what I'd like to do now is open it up to you do you have one of these would you consider buying one of these would you try anything different from what I've already mentioned? If you do, or you have some experience, and you have some other ideas of what you can do with this pot to cook with, then please put them in the comments section below. If you have any comments other than that, or questions you'd like to ask, put all that in the comments section below. I will, of course, be putting all the specifications for this pot in the video description, as well as the links to where you can put, purchase it. All right, that's all I have for you today.
get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.